Welcome back, everyone. Ready to dive into another fascinating corner of the AI world. Always. Today, we're getting into the brains of those large language models we all hear so much about. Peeking under the hood. Exactly. We're going beyond just what they produce. Right. To really grapple with the how. The reasoning process itself. Because turns out there's a lot more going on than just spitting out text. Oh, absolutely. And understanding how that thinking happens. Yeah. Well, it's key to both making these LLMs better. And using them more effectively. So where are we starting today? What's our source material? We're going deep in a paper called okay. A Theoretical Understanding of Chain of Thought, Coherent Reasoning and Error-Aware Demonstration. Catchy title. It is a bit dense. Who are the brains behind this? It's by Yinkian Kue, Penfei He, okay. and a team from Michigan State and Amazon. So they're really getting into the theory of how LLMs reason. Exactly. No messing around then. Straight into the nitty-gritty. Let's do it. All right, so what's the core idea they're trying to prove? What's the big takeaway? Well, they start by saying there are two distinct ways LLMs can reason. Okay, two paths. Two paths, yeah. They call them stepwise ICL and coherent COTL. ICL, COTL. Some of those acronyms, <laughs> but stick with me. That's okay. right. ICL stands for in-context learning. In-context, okay. And stepwise ICL, you can think of it like... Okay. Giving the LLM a few worked examples before th throwing a new problem at it. Got it. But here's the thing. It tackles each step in isolation. Ah, so like each step is its own little world. Kind of, yeah. Only using the result of the step before it. Okay. I'm picturing yeah. like following a recipe. Yes. But you have amnesia. Oh, that's good. And you only remember the last ingredient you added, not the whole dish you're making. Perfect analogy. That sounds disastrous in my kitchen. Yeah, for LLMs too, it can lead to some pretty... Wonky results. Wonky is a good word for it. So coherent cut is the opposite then. In a way. The LLM with a perfect memory. More than that even. More than perfect memory. It's not just remembering, it's integrating. Oh, interesting. With coherent cut, each step yeah. builds upon and even corrects okay. previous ones. So it's self-editing as it goes. You could say that. Like a detective. Ooh, I like this. Piecing together clues. Yeah. Where each new piece of evidence right. can change your understanding of the whole case. Exactly. The whole picture shifts. Okay, so coherent Kotz is looking back while reasoning. But the paper is saying this actually makes it better at predicting the future. Yeah, that's the counterintuitive part. How does that work? Well, that's where the theoretical part comes in. Okay, hit me with the theory. They actually have mathematical proof. They got the math. They did the math. Okay. It's Proposition 3.1, to be exact. Probably filing that away. <laughs> but the gist is... Yeah. It shows that coherent cold T leads to a lower loss than stepwise ICL. Loss meaning... Loss meaning errors, basically. Got it. So by looking back and connecting all those thoughts, the LLM can actually predict what's coming next. Okay. What's greater accuracy. That's wild. It's like saying someone who constantly revises their notes mm -hmm. is going to ace the test better than someone who crams right before. It is a bit like that, but obviously it's... More complex. Way more complex. With lots of math. Oh, yeah, lots of math. But that basic idea is fascinating. It is. And it gets even more interesting when we start poking at this coherent cotee to see where it's most vulnerable. Oh, yeah, this is where it gets really good. Okay, lay it on me. How do you test the fragility of an LLM's thought process? Well, it's called sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis? And it's like, imagine testing a bridge. Hmm. You know, you apply pressure at different points okay. to see where it might buckle. Right. So here they yeah. introduce errors, like tiny bits of into different parts of the LLM's reasoning. So they're messing with it a bit. A little bit, yeah. Okay, like the, the initial input. Exactly. The intermediate yeah. steps, the final amps. All of it, put it through the ringer. So where's the weak spot? Where does CAD crumble under pressure? You might think it's the initial input, right? Yeah, bad data in, bad data out. That's what you always hear. Seems logical. Right. But the surprising finding yeah. is that COT is most sensitive to errors in those intermediate reasoning steps. Oh, wow. So not the start. Nope. But the middle. The middle, exactly. That's counterintuitive. It is. It's like a domino effect. Ah, one wrong step throws off the whole chain. Exactly. One mistake early on amplifies down the line. So those middle steps, that's where the real magic yeah. and the potential for disaster. Absolutely. This feels huge for anyone actually working with LLM. Oh, it is. It's like knowing exactly where to focus your attention. Right. For the best results. Precisely. You want to waste time on the wrong thing. No, you got to focus on the... So they've shown us the weak spot. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling they didn't just leave us hanging with this potential for error. You know me too well. Right? They came up with a solution, didn't they? They did. They did. 
okay, I have to know, how do you fix something this fundamental right. to how the LOM thinks? Well, it's surprisingly elegant. <laughs> okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me. They call it I. Okay. Error-aware demonstrations. Error-aware demonstrations. Got it. And the idea is to show the LLM both correct and incorrect reasoning paths mm -hmm. during its training. So you're basically showing it what not to do. Yeah, and why? It's like showing a student worked examples mm -hmm. alongside common mistakes. Right. And explaining why they're wrong. You got it. It's like cognitive immunization. That's a great way to put it. You're giving the LLM a heads up. Yeah, like a warning. Okay, so by showing the LLM how easy it is to mess up. Right it becomes less likely to make those same mistakes. Exactly. It learns from the bad examples. And, and they tested this out. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. They used a bunch of different LLMs. Okay. Even the big names, like GPT and Gemini. Wow, the all-stars? They put them through their paces on benchmark tasks. Designed to really test reasoning abilities. Yeah, pushing them to their limits. Hold on. Before we jump to the results, sure. I'm curious about these examples. Yeah. What kind of wrong turns are we talking about here? There's one in the appendix that's really good. Oh, good specific. It's a date understanding task. Oh, okay. Where the prompt starts with a deliberately wrong year. Okay, so they're setting it up to fail. A little bit. Oh, and yeah. then they show the LLM step by step. Okay. The correct way to reason about the date and get to the right answer. So it's like they're walking the LLM through how to not mess up dates. Exactly. Like, here's how you avoid that trap. But the big question is, does this actually work right. across different tasks? Yeah. Different models. That's what they wanted to know. Well, spill the beans. The results were surprisingly consistent. Oh, that's promising. Yeah, they saw significant performance improvements. Just from doing this? Just from the error-aware demonstrations, yeah. Wow, okay, so how much improvement are we talking here? Sometimes exceeding 5% in certain cases. 5%? Might not sound like much. That's huge, right? In the world of LLMs. That's a big leap forward. It is. So this isn't just some niche trick? No, no. Oh, wait. Someone wants to join. Hey, go for it. Hey, hey there. That's the coherent COT to change the loss function. Well, hey there. It's great to hear from you. Yeah, we love when you chime in. We were just talking about how much of a boost right. that error-aware demonstration. Ah, uh, yeah, uh-huh. That's the coherent COT to change the loss function. Well, hey, that's a really insightful question. Yeah, it's great you're thinking about that. So you're noticing that the error-aware demonstrations right. are a kind of intervention? Right, they're adding a new element. And it's a good point to consider how that changes the loss function. Because we talked about the math earlier, mm -hmm. and the core concept is that coherent CoT has a lower loss, right. meaning fewer errors. And what the researchers showed yeah. is that the error-aware training right. actually <laughs> changes the loss function. Oh, it shifts it. Yeah, that's how it leads to improved performance. It's not just a surface-level change. Exactly. It's fundamental. It's like reshaping how the model learns. Yep. It's optimizing the model to avoid those errors. So by including those errors in the training, mm -hmm. you're altering what the model considers good? Exactly. That's a really key point. And you're exactly right. It's related to the CO2. Oh. Okay, you lost me there for a sec. Sorry, CoT, chain of thought, not CO2. Right, yes. Haha, -ha, very different things. And the change in the loss function is actually what makes this all work. Okay, so it's like a deliberate change to get more accurate results. Exactly. Okay, so we were about to jump into the next part of the research. Right, because it gets even better. It does. Okay, so where were we? What's next? They took that error-aware idea and added a twist. Okay. Instead of having people create the errors... Oh, okay. The LLM created the errors itself. Whoa, hold on. The LLM is making its own mistakes. Exactly. To learn from. That's right. That's like metal learning. It is. Like it's doing its own homework. Okay, that is wild. But did it actually work? And here's the kicker. It worked even better. No way. Yeah, like question answering and date understanding. <laughs> the sorts of things that really test an LLM's reasoning. Hey, yeah, what's up? So what's the inside for this theory? Well, that's a great question, and it gets to the heart of what makes this research so compelling. Yeah, it's like asking, what's the real, so what's behind this? Exactly, so beyond the surface results. Right, because the numbers are impressive. They are, but it's deeper than that. It's not just that they got better scores on tests. 
No, the real story here is that the researchers have shown us that LLMs don't just learn by being fed correct answers. Right. They also, maybe even especially, learn from their mistakes. Like a kind of metacognition. Yeah, and the study shows they learn best when they generate their own errors. Not just being shown errors that someone else made. That's right. So it's the LLM's own internal logic. Right. Like it understands its own particular shortcomings. And it has to go through that error to learn. So it's almost like for the LLM, the journey is just as important as the destination. Absolutely. The process, the thinking itself is key. And by showing the LLM how it might mess up, mm. you're guiding it to build a more solid kind of thinking. Yeah. It's like teaching it to recognize and avoid its own particular traps. That's what makes the difference. It also helps to explain what the researchers mean by coherent Kati. Okay. Tell us more. Because it's not enough for an LLM to just produce the right answer. Right. It needs to be able to retrace its own steps. And understand where it went right or wrong. And this ability to reflect is fundamental to its reasoning. Which all leads to better performance. Exactly. And it all hinges on that change to the loss function. Right, which we discussed before. So with all that in mind, let's get back to what we had planned. Okay, so the LLM is making its own mistakes to learn. Exactly. And across a few different data sets. So it wasn't just one single test. Nope, they really put these models through the ringer. Okay, so what did the results actually show us? Well, across the board, they saw consistent improvements. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, and that increase in accuracy, it wasn't marginal. No, you mentioned 5%. Sometimes even more than that on certain tasks. That's big. That's a big deal. And using the human made mistakes. Okay, that is mind-blowing. It seems LLMs are really good at learning from their own blunders. It's like they're saying, only I can truly understand my own mistakes and learn from them. Okay, so if LLMs learn best from their own mistakes, does this tell us anything about how we learn? Ooh, that's a good question. It goes beyond this paper. Right. But it's worth thinking about, right? Absolutely. Like, do our own blunders teach us more mm -hmm. than seeing someone else mess up? It is, because the baseline for these models is already pretty high. Okay, so that makes the jump even more impressive. Exactly. And that's thanks to error demonstrations. So really showing the model how it could fail yeah, those worked examples of bad reasoning made all the difference. Right, not just showing it the correct path. Maybe there's something to that. Makes you wonder if we could design learning systems. Yeah. That encourage more productive failing, you know? Like embracing those mistakes. If LLMs are any indication. No, but also showing it the common pitfalls to avoid. That's such a key piece of this, isn't it? It's fundamental. It's not just about knowing the right answer, but... Yeah. Recognizing when you're going down a wrong path. Right. Those self-generated errors could be the key to faster and more robust learning. A whole new way to think about education. It really makes you think. But hold that thought. We'll be back after the break to dig into more of this research and its implications. Can't wait. So we've seen these two ways of thinking, but the paper doesn't stop there, right? Oh, no, they go deeper. They really want to understand why coherent Kati works so well. Exactly. It's fascinating how they didn't just settle for showing that it works. Right, right. It went deep into the why. And then how to correct it and get back on track. It's like learning from your mistakes, but in advance. That's a great way to put it. So this whole study really highlights the power of a solid training set. Absolutely. And the importance of including those error-aware demonstrations. Yeah, not just relying on correct answers. Because it turns out even for LLMs, learning from mistakes is crucial. It is, and this study proves it. I'm just picturing all those LLMs suddenly going, oh, that's where I went wrong. Exactly. And then learning not to do it again. So what are the real world implications of all this? The underlying mechanisms. Using some serious math to back it up. Oh, yeah. It gets pretty dense in there. For our listeners who might not be fluent in all that mathematical target. Sure, sure. What are the key takeaways from those proofs? What do they actually reveal about how CoT works? Those proofs are like yeah. a blueprint showing how coherent CoT achieves its accuracy. So we're seeing the inner workings. Exactly. It's not just remembering. It's a constant feedback loop. Oh, interesting. Well, think of any field using LLMs. Okay, that's broad. Yeah, but the improvements will be across the board. Right. Anything from code generation to medical diagnosis. If the LLM makes fewer reasoning errors, the results are more trustworthy. Okay. So better, more reliable AI. By integrating information from every step, it refines its understanding in real time. So it's like the LLM is having this ongoing internal dialogue, mm -hmm. double-checking its logic at every turn. You could say that, yeah, it's constantly evaluating. And that makes the focus on those intermediate steps in the sensitivity analysis yeah. even more crucial, right? Oh, absolutely. If those steps are the backbone of the whole thought process, right. any error there 
could have a ripple effect. That's the hope. This really does feel like a fundamental step forward. It is a big leap, especially because it's so theoretically grounded. Yeah, the math is solid. And it's not just some random trick that works. No, it has a theoretical basis. And the fact they put the models through sensitivity analysis? Yes, showing where the errors come from. It adds so much more insight. It's like a full breakdown of the inner workings of reasoning. And that allows us to actually fix it. Well, this has definitely been a fascinating deep dive. It has, and it really shows how much more there is to learn about LLMs. Absolutely, there's still a ton we don't know. But this is a good step toward understanding. Definitely, and a good place for us to wrap up for today. Thanks for joining us for this journey. Yes, and especially thanks for your insightful questions and comments. We really appreciate you joining the conversation. See you next time.